photographs. Yeah. Why not? Eh? Cool. There you go. All right. You can move and talk and yeah. everything. It's <laughs> great. So. Go ahead. Well, what can we say? What is it? Tuesday hey, morning. San Francisco. Uh, Tuesday. It's uh, 9:47 on the 11th, of, the 11th Veterans Day. It is. Uh, we're about to take off from the double decker bus uh, on a tour, and there's Jim and Colin. Yeah, yeah. Having a reunion. Reunion after yes, what sir, six after years after, or something? Yeah, at least eight. Exactly. Well, I think it's 2002. Yeah. Something like that. It was yeah. 2003. Yeah. Oh, it was it was yeah. 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 Say hi, Brenda. Hi, Bran. Hi, Brandon. <laughs> Might send you a copy of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That'll be fine. This will be yeah. evidence. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Very cool. Thanks, Dad. I'll get, I'll get one of those. Two. Yeah, we'll get something to take uh, a yeah. shot of the three of us there. It's kind of different. I like this, yeah. The fisherman's more. Generally, when you get on here at Macy's, we're two-thirds into the tour. And this is the point at which we head back to Fisherman's Wharf. So the tour is an hour and a half, more or less, hour and 15, depending on traffic. Your ticket is good for two days to allow you to hop on and off. We have six buses running, usually. And so every half hour, a bus will pick you up at the various stops. There is a map. If you don't have one, we can get you one downstairs. Some of you have vouchers, we'll take care of that when we get to Fisherman's Wharf. I'll show you the office where you can take care of your vouchers. And um, Larry does have tickets downstairs, so I'll be able to get you a ticket. He has them downstairs. Um, okay, so this is Union Square. This is our shopping mecca. And Union Square here on our right was nothing but a big old sand dune before 1860. We called it O'Farrell's Mountain. It was renamed to commemorate the many pro-union rallies that were held here on the eve of the Civil War. Now underneath Union Square is a parking garage. It was the first underground garage built in 1941, and it served as an air raid shelter for a time. Uh, one, I don't think that one is, but there is one right down that alleyway that was, uh, yeah, the, it's the Xanadu Gallery, which is a Frank Lloyd Wright building. It's on Maiden Lane. So this is the shopping mecca. You'll see just about any brand name clothier you might be looking for here. Some fine jewelry stores, antique shops, and art galleries, and our large department stores. Gump straight ahead. We left Macy's and Neiman Marcus and Saks Fifth Avenue and Tiffany and Company. Chinatown, just around the corner here to the left, the main entrance called the Dragon Gate, situated at the south side because according to the Chinese philosophy of Feng Shui, any grand city's entrance should always be on the south side. Now this is the main shopping street of Chinatown today, but this street, Grant, was the first street laid out in the downtown area when San Francisco is nothing more than a very small settlement called Yerba Buena of about 600 settlers. And we went from 600 to about 50,000 in one year's time after the gold rush. So the Chinese men left China during a time of political chaos and famine. It coincided with our gold rush. So many thought they were going to get rich quick on gold, but that didn't happen. The Chinese became the very cheap laborers building our railroads. And they built the most treacherous parts of our railroad through the Sierra Nevada mountains, and many actually lost their lives doing so. We discriminated against the Chinese in the late 1800s when we passed the Exclusionary Act. Notice how narrow the street is through the gate. That was the actual size when they first laid that street out. So when we discriminated against them passing the Exclusionary Act, which forbid them from working here, they turned to the illicit activities like the opium dens that were very prevalent, the very young slave trade for prostitution that was a big problem here, and gambling. And we restricted the Chinese to live within a six block area within our Chinatown. That is where you see the very curious little alleyways today. Now those alleyways were actually streets, tiny streets that they were carving out within that six block area to make room for the Chinese people that kept coming. 
Today we have a very strong Chinese community here and one of the largest populations of Chinese people outside of their own country. This is the Bank of America building here on the right. It is the tallest of usable space. Well, until they opened the 60-story condominium development that actually has just been built in the South Beach neighborhood, but this is 52 stories. It is not as tall as the pyramid that we'll see, but it is the tallest of usable space. It is made of carnelian granite, and at the top is a restaurant called the Carnelian Room that will afford you a beautiful view of our city from the top there. Now, right in front of the building, you'll see a big black sculpted stone. It is referred to as the Banker's Heart. Bank of America started here in San Francisco in the early days as the Bank of Italy, started by J.P. Giannini. So this is the Banker's Heart there, laying there in front of the Bank of America. And if you look to the left here, you'll be looking up California Street to the top of Knob Hill, sometimes referred to as Snob Hill. Knob Hill was coined from the word nobility. There's the pagoda architecture of Chinatown. And St. Mary's Church is right up there, which was built in 1854 using bricks that were brought from China. All right, now you're going to see the pyramid here on the right, way up high. Now, in the early days before gold was discovered, the water of our bay actually came all the way up to Montgomery Street, which is one block to our right. Montgomery Street was the waterfront during the gold rush days, and right where the pyramid is, there was once a little cove called Yerba Buena Cove, and that's what the little settlement of San Francisco was called in those days, Yerba Buena, the one I mentioned, 600 settlers. So the water made its way up to where the pyramid is today, and that was the entry port to gold country, where hundreds of ships arrived, bringing sailors from all over the world, all seeking their fortune in gold. Now eventually we had to land fill all that in, and I'll tell you the story of that a little bit later on the tour. But right now, take a look at this little street right here on the right. That little narrow street was one of the original piers that went out into the water. And this was the first public plaza here called Yerba Buena, now called Portsmouth Square. So it was no more than 500 yards from the water. We had one customs house and three sides lined with gambling halls there. Today it's surrounded by Chinatown and it's called the Chinese Living Room. All right, we're now getting close to North Beach. And this green building here on the corner, and I'll talk more about it later when we come around the tour again, it's actually owned by Francis Ford Coppola of The Godfather. And if you look back, you'll see that nice picture of the old and new, the old Columbus Tower, the copper building with the pyramid in the background. And this is where the Beatnik literary movement was centered. Right here on the left, the yellow building is the famous Vesuvio Cafe. The Vesuvio Cafe where the Beatniks hung out in the 1950s. And the very historic City Lights bookstore that was started by one of the original Beat poets, Lawrence Sterling Getty, who started City Lights in order to get their poetry published. And right between the two, Jack Kerouac Alleyway. And right here on the right, if you look down Broadway, around the corner here, you'll see the Beat Museum. The Condor, directly in front of us on the right corner, that brick building, that was the first topless club in the United States in the 1960s, the Condor, where Carol Zoda used to dance topless. So this is the, um, we call this area North Beach, it's actually the Italian and Bohemian section of our city. It was the original Italian neighborhood here. So here we find many Italian restaurants, delicatessens, family red pastry shops, and coffee houses. And the church here on the right, this is the National Shrine of St. Francis of Assisi, who is the patron saint of our city. Lots of outdoor sidewalk tables along Columbus Street, the main street of North Beach, or some call it Little Italy, Little Italy. And um, notice that some of the street light posts have the colors green, white, and red painted around them. Those are the colors of the Italian flag, so they've marked their territory here. Now to the left here, Stockton Street, this is the main market street of Chinatown. The two main streets of Chinatown are Stockton, the market street, and Grant, the one that goes right up that main entrance that you saw. 
Now this is where you'll find many herbs and spices, exotic Chinese teas, and even some unidentifiable fruits and vegetables for some of us. We don't have a clue what they are, and that's because our Chinatown is like a small little country of China with